you know, how, how powerful a reality that Allah is the one who expands rizq for whoever he wants among his slaves and he contracts it for whoever he wants among his slaves. Allah can take your business and turn it from a few thousand dollars to a f millions of dollars a month. He can do that overnight. That can happen. And there are lots of success stories like that. He can also take somebody's multi-million dollar enterprise and it no longer exists. Right? That, that can happen too. You can have cell phone companies or computer companies or technology companies that used to be all the rave not 10, 15 years ago. And then they're, they're gone now. Like I, I was reminded that... Uh, you know, uh, Facebook HQ, I think it is, uh, is where Sun Microsystems used to be. And, you know, they, they still have the old Sun Microsystems sign just as a reminder of what could happen when you become obsolete, <laughs> right? But the idea is empires rise and empires fall. And we start thinking this is because of what I've done. This is because of my business strategy. This is because of the, I, I follow these tips and then I got there, right? But all these tips that you can follow, if everybody was following them, how come everybody's not turning into the success? There are other pieces to the, this puzzle. And the biggest piece of this puzzle is Allah decides when to expand the risk and when to contract the risk. There are people that are much better at business than I will ever be. And they are never successful in business. Even though they're much, much better. There are people that are much smarter than I will ever be, and they cannot get the job that, that I've got. You know, sometimes you have people that are like, they didn't even graduate high school, and they have the best job, and there's someone who's like 100 times more qualified, and they're applying everywhere, and they can't get a job. And sometimes the person who's least qualified is in management, and the guy working under him is 10 times more qualified than him. And, could, and he'll be there for 20 years. This, this is the, the reality of this world. And this is not just because it's a corrupt system, but actually sometimes Allah decides whose risk is going to open up and whose risk is going to close up. But now as I say that, you might start thinking, well then this is pretty fatalistic. And what's the point of me trying to get a degree? What's the point of me in trying to get a job? What's the point of me in trying to expand my business? Allah is going to do what Allah is going to do anyway, right? What am I even fighting for? Why do I even want those? Why do I even want that growth? And that's actually the question that I wanted to try to answer through these ayat today. Why should I try to do better? Like if you have a business, why should you try to expand your business or excel in your business? If you have a career, why should you want to do better in your career? You know, if you're a doctor, why shouldn't you want to run a hospital one day? Why, why shouldn't you want to move up and explore more horizons and expand and get bigger and bigger and bigger? Which is kind of like the legacy of Sulaiman alayhi salam, right? He wants to expand and expand and expand. And he's asking for more and more mulk. Then how do we reconcile these two things? Because people, the poor people looked at Qarun and said, oh, I wish I had what he has. Then how are we not like Qarun? The, uh, the, the first thing, the first realization that Allah has given to you and me, that's a wake-up call is no matter what material successes, worldly successes will come my way or not come my way, that is in the end not up to me. That is up to Allah. That's not up to me. That's number one. Number two, let's keep reading. تِلْكَ الدَّارُ الْآخِرَةُ نَجْعَلُهَا لِلَّذِينَ لَا يُرِيدُونَ عُلُوًا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَلَا فَسَادًا that last house, because this house was gone, right? The dar was gone. And then the same word dar was used in the next ayah. By the way, that final house, the house that is permanent, meaning the mansion that's waiting in Jannah, that's been made for those who do two things. لا يريدنا علوا في الأرض ولا فسادا. Now we get a key. He says it's for people who don't want ulu in the world. Ulu means to be high. They don't want to be high in the world. The idea of ulu is, I don't want to be somewhere where I can look down at someone and say, I beat you. I have more than you now. I used to look up to you, now I'm even better than you. Or, I, you know, and I, or I'm as high as you are. Meaning you set your standard as somebody else, and now you're competing to get to that standard. You let go of people, and who's high and who's low. You're, you know, sometimes there are siblings, and one of the siblings becomes a doctor 
or one of the siblings becomes a successful business person or whatever. And the other sibling is depressed because they're like, until I make more money than my brother, I have failed in my life. I need Rulu. I need it. Now this person is going to go to med school. Then they're going to become a specialist. Then they become a, a, a surgeon. They're really successful. But you know what? The, none of the, 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 the surgeries they've done, the career they've accomplished, none of that is actually what gives them satisfaction. When they get together at Eid and he's sitting next to his brother, uh, you know, I just bought my second property. That's be, all of it became worth it. The entire education, all of it. It wasn't to save lives. It wasn't, to, you know, it was just, I, I just need to beat this guy. I need to prove to my dad who's higher. That's all it is. Allah says the final home was made for people who don't want ulu. They don't look at something and say, man, I want that. And that's my goal. They let that go. That, that's, not, that's not on their mind. So now I have to think about myself. You have to think about yourself. How much of what we do is this pursuit of being higher, higher than someone else or as high as someone else? The ulu that we have in our, in our minds. It's not an accident that this, the opening of the surah, Allah uses key terms in a surah to teach us lessons. One of the, Fir'aun has a hundred descriptions in the Qur'an. What description did Allah use for Fir'aun in this surah? Inna Fir'auna ala fil ard. Fir'aun, Fir'aun was high up in the land. You know what that means? He used to look down at everybody. He used to look down at everybody. And at the end he says, by the way, the last home is for people who are not interested in ulu. If you're pursuing something because you believe in it, you're pursuing something because it, it's something good for you, it's something good for humanity. It has a purpose, but it has nothing to do with proving yourself to over anybody else. It has nothing to do with one-upping anybody else. You know, and I'll tell you a story I mentioned a long time ago. I was when I was I used to live in New York. It was really expensive, and I decided I'm going to move. So I, because I was traveling and teaching courses all over the country, everywhere I went, I was like, should I move here? Should I move here? Should I? You know, considering different options. And one of the cities I ended up in was Houston before I came to Dallas. And I looked at Houston. I liked the community a little bit. And then I asked somebody, hey, what do you think about moving here? I was like, like what are you going to do here? I was like, well, you know, I have this Arabic program and this Quran study program. We have a lot of those. Have you seen this one and this one and this one? There's a lot of competition here. You're not going to be able to keep up. And you should look at this website and this website. I was like, that's really cool that they have all that stuff. But why are you so concerned about competition? Or what somebody else is doing. Or, you know, people coming up to you know, they opened up a masjid. They opened up a school. They opened up the... That's so cool that they did. Why is that? Why, why should I think about that at all? And you know what? This is not just in the corporate world. You know who got the project? This is not just in the restaurant business. You know who's opening up a pizza place down the street? This even happens in the Islamic community, the Muslim community. You know who else is doing a youth program? You know what their MSA is doing? You know, we got to do more than them. We got to beat them. We got to have ulu. Allah says this, this is a sickness. This is the sickness of Fir'aun at the highest level. This was the sickness that Qarun put inside poor people. This is the irony that I want to explain to you. The, you know, Fir'aun actually had height. He had the palace. He had the power. But the poor people, they don't have it in their hand. They don't have ulu in their hand. But now they want ulu inside. And that destroys their hopes for the akhirah. La yuriduna uluwan. It's not people that have a lot. It's people that are just wanting a lot. Allah is commenting on what's going on inside my heart and my mind. And then he says, wala fasadan. And these are people that don't want corruption. It's interesting that the word fasad also used here is not ifsad, causing corruption. But it's corruption within. Fusuk and fasad are two words in Arabic for corruption. And fusuk is used for when a fruit or food goes bad. And you can see that the goo inside of the, the, the apple is coming out. Right? So you can, you can the, the, the corruption is coming out. That's fusuk. But fasad al laban, fasad al ta'am, the food looks good, but it's not good. Like on the outside, it looks fine, but when you taste it, you're like, oh my God, it's, it's bad. It's really bad. That's ta'am fasid. That's actually called fasid. So when Allah says fasad here, they don't want height, 
and they want to make they don't want anything to, for, they don't want to become corrupt on the inside and this is really interesting because a lot of times people have the appearance of success on the outside beautiful on the outside smart on the outside popular on the outside but they're losing themselves on the inside and allah says these people want to make sure that they don't get corrupted on the inside if i can if i can cure myself of these two tendencies then fly away grow grow your business as much as possible excel in your career as much as possible when your competitors become irrelevant when proving yourself to some family member becomes irrelevant when you're not looking at someone else and saying one day i'll have what when when you can erase that from inside of you that's the facade inside if you can get rid of that then yes pursue this dunya